You know how we've always had AMD and Intel as like the two main CPU people that we're using in the desktop? Well, that's likely not gonna be happening anymore. There's a certain company that wants getting involved on the mix and it is Apple. Of course it's Apple. Apple has the money, Apple has the investment. What did we think that they were gonna do with all of their heaps of billions of dollars in cash besides actually do something important with it? Everybody's speculating. Oh, they're gonna buy Netflix. Oh, they're gonna buy Disney. Oh, they're gonna do all of these amazing things. But guess what? That's not what they're gonna do. They're gonna be building their own CPUs, which I mean, they've already been doing that for the iPhone and the iPad. They developed, you know, the A8s, the A9s, the A10s is what we have now in the consumer mobile phone, mobile tablet thing. Tablets, not mobile tablets, they're tablets. That's what we have. We have Apple's own dedicated system on a chips, SOCs. They've developed hardware for their like actual own hardware, so like that's they're gonna be moving on. But before I get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I know, I know this looks like it's an abandoned warehouse. This is just a basement, okay? Like it's an unfinished basement. We could all just like, but I mean like there's plenty of room to move around. Like I can, I can cut like dance party. Or I can like work out, I don't, or I can like scale the wall. Like there's tons of activities. I could do jumping jacks. It looks a little creepy, but it's not that bad, okay? Okay, it's not that bad. Everybody just chill. I'm in a basement. That's what today's video is gonna be. I'm in South Carolina, just outside of Greenville. So, yeah. So today's article comes from Bloomberg Technology saying Apple plans to use its own chips in Macs from 2020, replacing Intel. Quoting it, 2020 replacing Intel. The initiative codenamed Kalamata after the olives because like Apple's olives. I don't get it. So it's still in the early development stages, but comes as a part of a larger strategy to make all Apple devices, including Macs, iPhones, and iPads, work more similarly and seamlessly together, said the people who asked not to be identified discussing private information. The project, which executives have approved, will likely result in a multi-step transition. The shift would be a blow to Intel, who apparently Apple provides Intel with 5% of its annual revenue, which is quite a lot for a single company when you consider all of the other things that Intel has their hands in and all of the other technologies that they're developing. Like for a single company such as Apple to take up 5% of their revenue and then to lose that because they're phasing you out because you're not good enough, that's gotta suck, right Intel? So Intel shares dropped 9.2%, the biggest intraday drop in more than two years. Apple could still theoretically abandon or delay the switch, but the company declined to comment and Intel said, we don't comment on speculation about our customers, which is fair. So the rest of the article is basically just speculating uh, a lot about where Intel has come from, where they're going, and all of the things that they developed. But I think this provides an interesting perspective. It's not likely that Apple is gonna replace Intel in its higher end lineups like the, the iMac Pro, because I mean, I doubt that they're gonna be running 18 core processors within the next few years. But by 2020, they should at least be able to replace things that are in the MacBook Air and things that are in maybe even the MacBook Pro lineup. If you look at the power of the A10 Fusion that's in their current lineup, like it's, it's remarkably good enough for like, if, if that was on a laptop, if that's on the MacBook Air, I'm totally down to actually use it and to like run a computer based on that. And then the battery life can be phenomenal because you get the power of an iPhone, but with the battery life of a MacBook Air, which is, I mean, it's small, but it's bigger than an iPhone. So you have more watt hours and like, it could be, it could be a decent venture. I'm excited. But I think that this can provide some extra competition in the space that's kind of been stagnant with only two players for so long. Apple, when they found out that they, there wasn't a good enough mobile segment, I mean, they developed their own ARM Cortex processors. It, it's why they have such, such success in the mobile market is because their processors are typically faster than what's out on the market when they release them and they have different features and they can customize it for their own hardware and part of Apple and the cult of Apple and the ability to you know bring everybody into the same ecosystem. This is part of that venture of, they can not only control the user experience of the UI and the UX and everything that goes on with what a MacBook is, but now they can also control what's under the hood, how it runs and how it can integrate with all of the rest of their products. And so like everybody wants the seamless transition of like you can type messages in iMessage from your MacBook onto your phone, but now that there could be even more once the entire ecosystem, including the processors and how they communicate can be developed to be all uniform. This brings us to the interesting speculation time of things where we can look at what exactly is going on with Apple and their transition to actually making more hardware and think that, I mean, there could be tons of other applications that go into this and then tons of other implications as far as like the rest of the desktop CPU market, because who's to say that Apple won't get into actually making desktop computers? They had, 
They could actually control the CPU experience. They can build OEM parts. They can provide their own motherboard. They can source all of the RAM and every, like everything that's needed to actually build a desktop and put in, you know, their, their new desktop processor in it. They can become an actual player in the desktop gaming sector. And I mean, this would be a good thing for AMD, not just because this is a bad thing for Intel. And actually, let me get to that in a second. Just because it's bad for Intel doesn't necessarily mean it's good for AMD. I actually think this is good for AMD Radeon Technologies Group, because if they're going to be developing their own CPUs, maybe like with the A10, like everything's going to be combined. It's going to be like an APU type of thing where the graphics and the CPU are merged together. But then also for a more higher end experience where like, let's say this is a MacBook Pro and you need dedicated graphics. Well, because they were using Intel chips, it was like the Iris Pro. That's the basically the best that you're going to get. But if you wanted a dedicated GPU on an Apple product, it was it was AMD. It wasn't Nvidia because like Apple and Nvidia just don't like to work together. So this could be good for Radeon Technologies Group if if Apple actually wants to develop more higher end hardware along the lines of like let's say an actual MacBook Pro that's actually used for people who want to do content creation, but then also gaming on the side. So if Apple even wanted to take this farther with developing like a, an actual Mac that, that, that has dedicated GPUs with combined with like their actual own gaming processor like Intel would have, then this is good. Like if, once Apple can control the ecosystem on what they're trying to do, I mean, they basically go full steam ahead and try to take over the market. If they can start cornering the market on some of the OEM sales of desktop computers and compete with the likes of HP, Dell, Lenovo, and not just from a Mac perspective, but just like we're gonna, we're gonna invest more heavily into the actual creation of our CPUs and GPUs. We're gonna delve more heavily into the, the creation of our CPUs so that we can have a better overall hardware experience. AMD might be picked up for the ride, but then also, so the reason why I think if Intel is suffering here at the hands of Apple and they lose 5% of their entire revenue, which likely Apple's not gonna stop using all of the parts that they use, all Intel parts, because I mean, they even use like uh, like the Intel network bridges and like Intel's still going to be involved, like even if they're removing the CPU. So Intel is still going to be involved in Apple's life. This isn't a divorce where they can't see each other ever again, okay? This is gonna be an amicable split and everybody gets to see the kids, okay? There's gonna be custody, all right? Joint custody, that's how this is gonna work, okay? All right, joint custody. That's what, that's what we're going for here. So if Intel gets segregated out of the market because Apple believes that it actually w it can produce a better user experience, this could result in higher competition for Intel. If Intel has to make up more revenue for the lost revenue from Apple, that means that they actually need to innovate and come into new spaces and new 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 places with, with the hardware that they currently have or develop new hardware for emerging markets that don't necessarily uh, that like need their products, which is a bad thing for AMD because Intel has the capital for R&D. Intel has the ability to resource all of these different areas that they could necessarily need to go into once Apple starts to try to corner their market. That would mean AMD couldn't keep up with the R&D that Intel is trying to pump into things because like as, as great of a success as Ryzen and all of that has been for AMD, at the same time, it's super limited in scope. Like desktop CPU market isn't that fantastic like AMD's barely into the laptop market like there's only one desktop Ryzen CPU laptop that exists and then like even the the mobile Ryzen CPUs are just not really happening like they exist but they're not that great and nobody's really buying them and they're not there because like AMD is not pushing that far because they can only choose to invest in one thing at a time which was trying to bet on the success of the mainstream Ryzen processor which actually happened but at the same time like it took everything that they had it took all of their development teams it like it basically amd put everything into ryzen and if it didn't work out they were going to be screwed and while it's successful i don't know if it's to the point where they can actually compete with intel in other markets and that if they can't compete with intel in other markets that we're just going to force ourselves into another duopoly situation where we have apple and intel trying to fight for the same customers as opposed to intel and amd but like, I mean, I guess it's kind of been like Intel's competing by itself. So it's technically a good thing. I don't know. These are all of my thoughts on this matter. It's not, not well laid plans, not well laid thoughts either. These are just things that I'm speculating about as I read the news and I'm trying to think of the implications going forward and how Apple might 
position themselves in the market, not just taking over for their MacBooks and not just taking over for their, their current hardware, but then them trying to get into a space, one, that already exists, but then two, that they could take even farther if they could seamlessly cohabit with the rest of their entire ecosystem and create this like powerhouse of like, we all joke that you can't game on a Mac, but it wouldn't surprise me if with this move of Apple or Apple trying to, to develop their own CPU that they would try to get away from that stereotype and then also develop gaming desktops and gaming laptops and things that like the average, cons like the, the, not the average consumer, but a lot of consumers actually want from them. So I could see it going that route. I could also see it going just like they just want something for their lower end SKUs and then they're gonna keep Intel for the higher end ones. And then AMD graphics cards are just gonna be used in like the, you know, you have an RX Vega 56 and the iMac Pro and that's gonna stay the same and everything at the top end is gonna stay the same. But I think it's interesting if they're gonna put all of the time and effort into like creating a desktop, even if it's in a laptop, but like a desktop CPU, I could see them taking it even a step further. But who knows, this is all just like, ethereal at this moment. Apple's not commenting, Intel's not commenting, but we have information from Bloomberg that, yeah, Apple could be getting into the desktop CPU space, which is, I mean, I think I'm, I'm okay with the competition as long as it plays out correctly and it doesn't play out into the situation where Apple takes a lion's share of the market and then we have, we just have a bigger Apple and we don't have, like we don't have Intel and AMD and Qualcomm and any of the other CPU manufacturers trying to come in and actually match them on that. If like Apple comes in and stomps the market, that's gonna suck. Anyways, what do you all think? Let me know your thoughts on Apple entering into the CPU space. Let me know your thoughts either down in the Discord, top link in the video description, if you wanna head over there and chat in our community, or you can do it down in the comments, of course, because we're here on YouTube. So definitely do that. Smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts smash the like button, get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. I like this space, to be honest. Like, I know it's a little weird, but I, I dig it. And it, it just kind of furthers the narrative that I'm on the run from the police. So like, it's apropos.